always design something that's recognizable at the size of a dime. What's the value of having a brand, a personal brand? Let's think of Apple. Let's think of Nike. Let's think of Starbucks, you know, the biggest brands in the world. In that case, yes, a logo and an image is very powerful because what have they done? And I used to be a part of that and developing those brands for those large Fortune 100s is that you can create something that's identifiable when you're driving 80 miles. You, know, you shouldn't be driving that fast, whatever the speed limit is. 70 miles an hour on the highway, you can recognize something like that. My little girls, when we're driving, they'll go, Starbucks! You know, they can't read and they know the little mermaid is Starbucks. So how do we do that for personal brands? How do we do that for our businesses? This is really tactical. So hopefully this is helpful. When you're developing a logo for your brand, for your personal brand, for your company, for your podcast, Always consider this, and this is, this goes back to like the nineties when I was in college and some of the biggest, you know, one of the maze I went to school in New York city at school of visual arts, I had like MTV's creative director as my teacher and people that were just amazing pentagram, all these gigantic ad agencies you see in the movies. They were my teachers. One guy said, Joe Messina, I'll never forget. He said, when you created this, oh, so amazing that I have this here, when you create a logo and he was saying this before social media. Always design something that's recognizable at the size of a dime. Mm. Because why? It's going to be small. It's going to be in a lot of different places. It's going to be on a pencil. And it has to be simple. So what I've noticed is people create cover art for their podcast. They create all this stuff. They create, and there's too much detail. There's too many. There's all this stuff. And I'm like, it needs to be recognizable within a split second. Now, if you look at my logo on air brands, everything that I create is like, I got it. I got it. I got it. You don't even know, know to know what my company does, but you hear on air. Like, oh shit. Yeah. He's putting us on the air. I get it. So if you can distill what you do in words and then an image like that, that's identifiable within a split second, people understand what you do. You're gold. Now, how do you get that done, right? You're like, ah, man, I went to school for business or I went to school for this or that. You hire people that have been doing it. It's easier for them because they know the chemical makeup and the DNA of what is a good brand. Now I'm not talking about just the tactics, but you have to understand, like I was saying, the pillars, right? With your personal brand, with your company, that is also powerful. You don't necessarily need a powerful logo, but if your company, they move and they operate and they all speak the same language. That's gonna be something that gives trust and instills trust in your clientele. Cause they're like, man, I spoke to J-Max assistant. I spoke to J-Max producer. I spoke to all these people. It's like, I'm talking to one person, a collective. That's powerful. And that takes culture. That's big. Love it. So when I think about personal brands and what people would say about you when you're not in the room, Right? Cause I say the same thing about value companies, values. It's what people, it's the stories people tell at the lunchroom when you're not there, right? Those are the real values of the company. And so when I think about the value of personal brand and I think about Zach, I think about a leader, a great communicator, a pragmatic problem solver, right? And those things follow you no matter where you're going. Right. And so part of that, and I think the opportunity that we have with social media in particular is you can become known for those things by acting authentically, knowing who you are and how you're gonna show up. 